Yours. Thank you very much. Um, so, hello, my name is Jaap Trouw. Um, before I start uh, in this talk, you need to do stuff. <laughs> so you can r still run if you want to. No? No, okay. Uh, because a, a talk about complex problem solving cannot be a talk about complex problem solving if you are not solving problems. So you're gonna solve some problems during this talk. So, beware. First, a little, about, little bit about me. I'm a family man. This is my girlfriend and my two kids. I run really long. This is at the end of a seven hour run, uh, two weeks ago. Um, so I do ultra trails. Um, and I work at a company, it's my own company, there's one employee, and um, I'm a philosopher and complex problem solver, so that's, that's about me. And I'll give you the first riddle. At Raadhuis is a very famous restaurant with an excellent reputation. One day all customers got sick. There was nothing wrong with the food. What happened? So, now you're up. What happened? Okay, so that was jumping to conclusions. No. Nope. <laughs> Something with the drinks. No. Nope. Something in the air. Something in the air. No. Nope. Something not related to food. Something not related to food. Yes. Well, they're not. I'm. I'm, as, I'm answering the questions, but they're not actually questions. You're jumping to conclusions, right? Okay. What was the location of this restaurant? Um, that's a good question. We'll come back to that one. But, yeah, so one, one, one more. How many customers are there? How many? About 150. So, what was the sequence? What was the? The sequence. What kind of the sequence was? The disease. The, sorry. Disease. Disease. Ah, good question. Because now you're asking what actually the problem was more specifically. They were vomiting. But we'll come back to this. We'll solve this in the end, right? Um, complex problem solving, um, as at least deemed by the World Economic Forum, that's that forum where rich people talk to super rich people about us normal people, right? <laughs> um, uh, the top 10 skills for now and for 2020 is complex problem solving. And by the way, if you look at complex problem solving on Twitter or any social media or any, anything on the internet, Lego always comes in. I don't know why, but they seem to solve problems with Lego. So complex problem solving is something we need to know and we need to do. And by the way, there were some questions here and it was a very good question here in the beginning. Jumping to conclusions is not a really good start for complex problem solving, guys and girls. Um, so what I wanna do in this talk actually is with um, a little bit of knowledge you already should know, uh, some kind of a trick uh, and some common sense the term for DevOps, right, no? Um, is teach you how to actually solve complex problems, yeah? So, the first piece of knowledge is open and closed questions. Who knows what open and closed questions are? Closed is only yes or no. Closed is only yes or no. True, so what's the, what is, and this is an open question for those who don't know, what is the main difference or what's the main thing between open and closed questions. Open question against the person, do you ask the person against their thinking? Gets a? Gets a thinking, gets other person thinking. Yes, in, coined in another way, open questions give you more information than you have. Closed questions just check the knowledge you already have. Is it this or that, that there's knowledge in that question, and you just check it, yes or no, right? That's the main difference. So if you don't know anything about a problem, what are the best questions to ask first? Thank you. So I had the riddle in the beginning, and how many open questions did I get? Two. Two, right, okay, so that's one. This you know, actually, but you forget when you have riddles or, open or complex problems. So keep this in mind. Then there's a trick, and we'll do that with ice cream, by the way. Um, if you already know this trick, um, uh, don't solve it for others, let them struggle. Um, so we have three cards with ice cream, and somebody made a mistake and filled the ice cream with exactly, or filled the cards exactly with the wrong ones. 
So what you do know is that um, the, this one does not have vanilla ice cream in there. This one does not have chocolate ice cream in there. And this one does not have vanilla and chocolate in there. And these are the only possibilities you have. But it's not in there. Um, to solve this problem, we need to open ice, we need to take ice creams out of the cart and open the wrapper to see what's in there. Because I want to know what, what's in the cart, right? Um, and every piece of ice cream is about one euro. So, how much money would it take to solve this problem? And you can pick out as much ice cream as you want per cart. There's about 3,000 pieces of ice cream in the cart. I'll give you two minutes. Who are you? you can guess. And I'm a product owner, so I want best value for solving stuff, so I want the least amount of money paid. <laughs> yeah, so I have three cards. Uh, one of the cards has vanilla and chocolate, one of the cards has chocolate, and one of the cards has vanilla. What I do know is that the label under it is not what's in it. Okay. How many cards are vanilla? These two. There are only two flavors? Yeah. Okay, and how many number of uh, like, uh, ice cream per flavor? So every card has 3,000. Fine, but yeah. uh, per flavor? So uh, uh, there are in total who, what, one and, four and a half thousand pieces of vanilla one, uh, and one and a half thousand pieces of chocolate ice cream, right? So one cart only has vanilla, one cart only has chocolate, one cart has vanilla and chocolate. Yeah, but the labels under the cart now are not the, it, not what's in it. And you have to, hmm? what you have to do? You have to pick out ice cream out of the carts, open the wrapper and see what's in it, so then you know what's in the cart. It's, it's, huh? Same flavor in one card, like one box has yeah, but one box, one of the cards has both flavors. One euro. One euro. Who, you say two, you say one? Oh, question. question. No, 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 no. One? One, one euro. Okay, then my question to you, how do you know? And why? So where do you start? Where do you start solving this problem? The correct answer is one. It only costs you one euro to know everything. Hmm? So, guys, okay. <laughs> nice, right? Interactive talk. So the answer is one. But there's only one way of solving this. Yeah? Okay, and I'll show you because that explains it better. Making things visual in complex problem solving really helps to, because there's, the correct answer is one, but how? Okay. So, the tr and I'll also explain the trick. Um, what you actually use is the, what I call the is not information to solve the riddle. So instead of, trying to answer what is the problem, you can also ask questions about what's not the problem to solve the problem, right? And it, it goes like this. Here you have the is and the is not, right? Um, and here, what I said was vanilla is not in there. So this is the is not information, correct? That means that the only two possibilities that card has is chocolate or vanilla and chocolate, correct? Yeah. Yes, okay. So for the rest, I fill in the same, right? And the only way this trick works is if you choose one here. Yeah? Because if I take in out one ice cream and it happens to be chocolate, then this card only has chocolate ice cream. And then I know the rest, because that cannot be chocolate, so that has to be vanilla and chocolate, and then you know the rest. It works the other way around also, right? If I would have chosen vanilla 
works the other way around. So it will only cost me one euro to solve this riddle. Yeah? And I'm actually using the is not information to solve it. So now we have two parts. One is open and close questions, start with open questions, and use is not information. Okay, now common sense. Yesterday, uh, you saw my children, right? When they come down in the morning at quarter to seven, I put on the TV and uh, they can watch TV. Uh, yeah, okay, the, you can have an opinion about that one, but that's the case. Um, and what happened? I turn on the TV and I have uh, NPO1, one of the channels here in, in the Netherlands, and that works fine and I switch to SAP and instead of this, I see this, right? What do you do? Panic. Panic. Panic, yes. And then you have incident commanders to solve things, so you call KPN or whatever service provider you have, and you go, ah, something's wrong, right? No. Change the program, why? We'll find out if everyone is like this. Yes, yeah. So what you do, you actually switch channels, in this case you didn't need to, because you want to exclude possible causes for something, Narrow right? Narrow it down. And switching is also using the is not information because you want to check where it's not, exactly. correct? Narrow. Okay, so you can do this, is and is not, and I gave you some information, right? So MPO3 has white noise, but you already knew you didn't have to switch because MPO1 is working fine. That's what I told you, right? Based on this information, what can I exclude as possible causes? <laughs> Provider outage. Hmm? Yeah? Service yeah, service interruption. What else? It's not your problem. <laughs> it's not my? Problem. <laughs> yeah, okay, so if my kids have problems, they become my problems instantly. <laughs> Yes, yes, so my TV is working fine. Um, yeah, so that's, it's not my modem. It could be my decoder still, but uh, something like that. Yeah? yeah, loose cable or whatever. So what if w I would have called in panic to KPN or whatever provider and said, ah, MPO3 is not working, white noise. What would they say? Yes. Could you turn on and off your TV? Could you install the latest software? Could you do whatever kinds of things? You don't need to do because you have the SNOT information already, right? Okay, so we have more information. I only have white noise. It's not that my TV isn't working at all or whatever. I told you it was at quarter to seven yesterday. So now you can ask questions to solve this problem, right? So what was the last time it did work, for instance? Or where exactly, good question, or when, ex when exactly did it happen? It did exactly at startup, not after a while or whatever. Uh, it was the TV downstairs. Uh, now, well based on only this information, you could not solve everything, but you could ask questions like, open questions like, when before did it work? Well, the day before at 10, I still watched MPO3 and it worked. So somewhere between this time, this time something happened, correct? Um, by the way, I shouted out upstairs to my girlfriend, hey, is MPO3 not working upstairs as well? And the TV in the bedroom was working fine. So narrowing it down again, right? Yeah, so, uh, so incident management, send the kids, uh, kids upstairs, right? Problem solved, no. <laughs> incident solved, yay. Yeah? No, and you can have, it's only one TV, not two. It's not changing the problem. So based on what, when, where, how many, and which trend the problem has, you can solve this problem. Or you can narrow down possible causes. So we had three things, right? We had open and closed questions, start with open. We had a trick that's got the is not. And the sequence of questions, 
because what questions are more important than when questions, but when questions are more important than where questions, yeah, in solving problems. Okay, three, si three simple tricks. You already know this because you solve these kinds of problems already. And in complex problem solving, it's the freaking same. First, get the information in. Okay. And you do have a whole kind of standardized list on how to ask these questions and stuff like that in any situation, but, well, if you want to have this, come on by later. Well, we still have this problem, right? So, what do we need to do? How the customer is there? Sorry? How the, com how the customers came, came to the restaurant? All by all kinds of means. So it's a good open question. Yeah? Do we know about people not from the restaurant that can take also? Yeah, right. So, what, so I'll help you out because this, this is new. Combining the three tricks is a three body problem and it gets complex and chaotic, right? So first question, what exactly are the persons in this case that had the problem? Customers. They Only customers. Yes. No, I didn't say. You need to check. What other persons in the restaurant did not have the problem? The, the staff, whatever. Okay, so you, knew more, you, knew, you know more. What exactly is the sickness? Vomiting, right? What, yeah, sir? What are the customers? Oh, they're a mix of people. So it's not one group, it's about 150 people, uh, families, groups, changed. I was gonna ask how many it was. I was gonna say one person. No, no, 150 customers. <laughs> so next question would be. Hmm? The location from where they travel to that restaurant. Oh, all over the Netherlands. Okay. Yeah. So it's not one of the, is it their first time in the restaurant? Yes. Close question. Do they have any disease that is the same between all of them? Sorry? All of them have the same disease, they are vomiting. No, 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 uh, some prey coach. Oh, before, yeah. no. When did they go? At 12, 12, well, the first one started at around 12. It was the drink. <laughs> no. <laughs> Do they have any allergy? Hmm? Allergy. No. Could be water, it could be tap water or water. No. Yes. But it's not food. So, it was, so it's a it was something else that's the food? Probably. Yes. We are, yeah. How long did it last? How long did it last? It lasted for about one and a half hours. Oh, open question, right? I told you guys, stop asking the closed question. Open questions. Come on. Huh? Where, is the Where was the restaurant? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, it was between Den Helder and Tessel. But you're asking a lot of questions. If you, in the, in the open questions, you have a certain order, then it will help. And this is actually the order. You cannot read it, but you can come by later. The order is, and then you can solve it in about six or seven questions. Watch this. So what are exactly the persons that have the problem? The customers. What is the exact sickness do that they have? You want to be specific about the deviation, about the problem they have. It's vomiting. What other persons, so that's, Question three, what other persons could have been sick but are not at this time? Fact, factual, staff. What other sickness could they have had but we don't see right now? Fever, so you can list it, right? It's just vomiting, it's nothing else. That means it's probably not a virus because your body reacts to it with fever, right? So you, you're narrowing down. Okay, when did it start? Who asked that question? Yes, good. The first one started at around 12. And then you cannot do a follow-up question, and the rest? Well, they started vomiting in, in order, they were lined up, and they, no. Uh, yeah? When could they have been vomiting, but didn't? You always ask the question before. Well, before 12, it actually started at 12. We don't know why, but at least that's the information, right? So then we have what, when, and then where, good question. Where did they start vomiting? Well, in the restaurant in the hallway, and then you get more specific. Where was that restaurant exactly? 
on the ferry. And then you go, then everybody went, oh, it's on a boat, so it's probably seasick, motion sickness, seasickness. Yeah? If you have an order in the sequence of open questions you have, using the is not information also to narrow stuff down, it's complex problem solving. Yeah? And you already know. You know open and closed questions, you know-ish, open and closed question. <laughs> There's a trick. And you just have a sequence of, uh, of things. Yeah? Complex problem solving. Now talk to you. Good luck. You. Questions. Which questions do you have? <laughs> Sorry. Keep them close. <laughs> Thank you. Any questions? No? They don't dare anymore. <laughs> I have one. Yeah. Is that a real story? What? <laughs> the TV. The TV. Yes, it happened numerous times. And the boat? No. Okay. So if you ever happen to come up with this riddle in another talk, also the ice cream thing is, um, I think Apple used this. You can, you can Google it. And they used um, apples and pears in the job interviews. The same riddle, just to see if somebody gets how to solve problems. So I just stole it. Uh, yeah. Any other questions? What is the worst outcome Please you've seen? catch. What is the worst outcome outcome you've seen when people not uh, solve problems this way? <laughs> oh God. Um, Okay, two, two anecdotes. Um, one of my first, um, I'm a facilitator, so I help teams solve complex problems uh, by asking these questions so they don't have to. Uh, one of my first assignments was a team of 20 people working on a problem in a pharmaceutical industry um, for about six months. Um, and they didn't have the root cause. And by just asking, I, had, I facilitated for two days, three times, and then they had it, because I was asking these kind of problems. Uh, the, another anecdote, uh, a financial institution, I cannot name, uh, had a big problem that, that was there for years and years and years. Um, and I asked the question, which country does have the problem? It's only the Netherlands. But what's the exact problem? Well, they explained. What other countries or other banks in your company could have had the problem but don't? And you need to have the factual, right? You, it's not could have, but. And they said, all other countries where we are. So it's only the Netherlands. Yes, it's only the Netherlands. And I said, where's the proof of that? And they had it for five years. Well, we had conferences and talks, and we had all kinds of come togethers and collaboration on solving the problem. We couldn't, and everybody said, we don't have the problem. Yeah, everybody said, you know, they don't have the problem. Where's the proof? Logging, I don't give where you get the proof, but get the proof out there. And then they said, hmm, that's a good point. We actually didn't talk about the exact problem we have. And then they went back, and then it seemed that every country had the problem. So within three questions, and not believing the answer, the first answer you get, but only asking three questions, they, it was a total turnaround of the problem. That's, that's probably the worst, because they have spent millions of euros, actually, in this case, to solving the problem. And it was like three questions later, they go like, oh. That's so. Yeah, oh. So, you prove it. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> what is the best way of practic uh, making this a practice uh, on the companies or in your personal life? to think about this, it's a post-it, it's something yeah. that you hear every yeah. day in the morning. What is the best way to do this? Um, put a post-it on your computer saying open and closed question. It's, it's triggering yourself in a certain way that works best for you to ask the right questions. Um, yeah, I mean, you could do training in this because as you've seen, open and closed questions or any kind of question and is and is not can become complex in more complex problems. 
Um, so usually it helps to have outside help to ask the questions so the experts can just be the experts and give the answers. And you have a, a, a facilitator to actually um, ask the right questions that can help. You can get training in this. It's, uh, it's like incident management only actually solving problems instead of ETO or whatever. Um, so that, that's a way. But just for yourself as a reminder, uh, yeah, um, or a, a, a every time, oh, try it at home. It's a disclaimer, by the way, so don't blame me. <laughs> try to see how many open and closed questions you ask at home. <laughs> yeah? But you can come by later and we can talk about. My question was very similar to that one, that how to train the teams. Uh, yeah. uh, for this practice and I've, I've been a trainer in this as well so you have you have on several levels you have training um, it works for incident and problem managers probably in, in the old way of, of doing stuff or the the incident commanders as, as yeah um, it's you, you can train this in two or three days and and then it's practice 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 so is there any material available like for the practice like the riddles in this specific manner with the yeah you can, uh, one of the, one of the uh, former companies I work for, it's called CoThink, C-O-T-H-I-N-K. Um, if you go to their website, actually there's a lot of stuff there on, on problem solving and you can actually, I think you can actually download the, the overview I gave, so. Okay. Anyone else? Any other questions? Any other questions? So how relevant is the order of those questions? For example, if one of the questions, the reason I ask you, if one of the questions they answer like, well, I'm not entirely sure, should you skip or should you say, no, this question has to be answered first, factually, before we go on? Yeah, uh, good question. That depends in which situation you are. If you are in incident mode, that means, in my terms, incident means solve the problem in any, get, yeah, get the service back up in any means possible. If you use duct tape or whatever, fine, just get it up again. That's incident mode, skip, do it in other orders, but ask the right questions, act upon stuff and stuff like that. So that's, that doesn't matter. If you're in problem mode, easy with a team, it's a tough problem, it doesn't need to be solved today, but you can still do it. Then the order is important because that, and then you have to, you can ask all the questions, but then you mark the ones you don't know or need to check. Then you break up, come back, with the answers and then solve the problem. Then, then it becomes more important. But in incident mode, I mean solve it, right? Yeah. Whatever means. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? No? Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Cool. So there's still time.